Hey guys, this week one of the things I did was install this Bosch IDS premium system. Thanks to Bosch for sending that over there to me. It has turned out to be much nicer than I thought it would be. But that full that um, install video should be coming soon. What I want to do right now is just go over a few things and try to connect to this Bluetooth connected part of it because I was having trouble with it. Stay tuned. happened to watch a very informative video that Shannon Knight put out a couple days ago and this one is much different than the one that he put out the one that he put out had two buttons up here and here we've got three looks like we got a, a force button which can force it into high speed These two little dip switches, one and two, that are by themselves, that are turned off, that's for the defrost. But what I wanted to do was try and connect to this right here. All right, I'm still unable to connect to the Bluetooth thing because there's something wrong with the Bosch app but i was going to go over these dip switches right here the one two three four and the one two and discuss why i have those set hold on a second these dip switches right here and discuss why i have them set the way i do those first four the first two are not used and that three that i have turned on is adaptive capacity output enabled and that means it's a self-learning function which allows a range of target coil temperatures to adapt for better unit operation and reduce short cycling so I turn that one on and the other two that are two by themselves over here I turn the first one on operating time is reduced by 10% here defrost is, is not a major thing and it don't take long to get ice off the coil so um reduce it by 10 percent is fine with me the other one is normal normal let me see two defrost extended for 60 seconds i don't need to extend the defrost for 60 seconds and this right here shows a force and a check button i have a force and two check buttons so this is not up to date with what i've got the force button can put it into high speed for you in case you need to charge and you can hold it down for eight seconds to put it into defrost like I said, I learned that from Shannon Knight's video the other day. And I think the check button right next to it can cycle through the parameters on this. Which are going to be listed right here. Oops, I'm sorry if that was Shannon. We got error codes in code for how it's running. And here's the checkpoint descriptions. We can check unit capacity, H3 heat pump, three ton, outdoor unit mode, standby, cooling or heating, outdoor unit set compressor speed. That's a Hertz. 
which we'll be able to read right there. And um, where are we? Outdoor temp, coil, ambient temp, compressor discharge temp, compressor suction temp, liquid line temp, module temp, evaporator pressure, condensing pressure, target evaporating temperature only for cooling, we can get target of the compressor discharge superheat, discharge superheat. Can we get subcooling on this? Target condensed to temporary. Mm, I'm not sure I can get subcooling. Software version, outdoor fan speed, compressor current. Power AC voltage. Um, it don't look like I can get subcooling, but getting superheat pressures, DC voltage, and hertz is all real nice. I guess that was just a teaser with these temperatures that we're having right now. I don't have to run my air conditioner through the day. By the end of the day, I may have to cool off the house a little bit. So it'd be nice and cool when we go to bed, but that's it. Um, temperatures and weather have been really nice lately. I really do hope I get approval to publish that um, install video in the coming days, maybe tomorrow. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.